How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and today I'm going to be talking about my opinion of the iPad 2017 versus the iPad mini 4. So just to give you some background and a bit of an idea of what you can expect in this sort of mini review or comparison, I'm going to be talking about the user experience. I'm not going to be talking about the technical specs on these things. If you're interested in that sort of information, you can always look it up on Wikipedia or something. So back in mid 2016, I was was interested in getting into more or less mobile gaming. There were a couple of reasons for this. For one thing, I wanted to cover more mobile games on my channel, and not all of them have been ported over to Steam. And in addition to that, there was the anticipation that Stronghold Kingdoms would be releasing in a relatively short amount of time. That didn't pan out, but it didn't change the fact that I went ahead and bought an entry-level iPad, that being the iPad Mini 4. Now, this was the step up from the 16 gigabyte one, so I have the iPad Mini 4 64 gigabyte one. It is no longer sold. Apple has discontinued it in favor of the 32 gigabyte one at a reduced cost. So basically what they did was they bumped up the 16 to 32 and then the ax to 64. But the thing about it is I the reason I bought the iPad mini 4 is because it was the most cost effective option that was currently available at the time. It wasn't because I needed a really small tablet or necessarily wanted one. So that is something that you should keep in mind when and I explain my preferences here. So I've used the iPad mini 4 for these last like eight months or so. It's been in a couple of videos that I've done and by and large, I was happy with it. But then earlier this year, it was back in March, I believe, Apple announced that they are going to be, or Apple announced that they released the iPad 2017. And it really is just called the iPad 2017. If you look at Apple's site, they'll list it as simply iPad. So that's why I think most people are calling it iPad 2017. 2017. A couple of variations on this could be iPad 5 or iPad 7, depending upon whether or not you're actually going to include the iPad Air models that came before it. So basically, this iPad is supposed to be the successor to the iPad Air 2, which was um, Apple's current full-size tablet that wasn't actually in the Pro section. So it's basically the standard tablet that Apple made. Um, so I went ahead and bought it because it was significantly cheaper than and what I paid for the iPad mini 4. When I bought the iPad mini 4, it was around $500. The iPad 2017 was about 320, 330. So it was significantly cheaper and I knew that I would be able to sell the iPad mini 4 on eBay for about how much I paid for the iPad 2017 if I liked it. And the thing was I bought it directly from Apple and I could ship it back if I didn't like it after two weeks. So I've been trying it for two weeks. Um, I've been using it for about a week now and I was just going to talk about the differences that I actually did notice between the two of them. So for for one thing, it's a lot bigger. The screen size is significantly larger when you compare them and when you're holding them in your hands, you'll notice the difference. I particularly appreciate the larger size in my use scenario. So the the place I usually use the iPad is in bed. Now, I know a lot of people might actually be traveling around with them, and that is why it's important to make this distinction. I don't travel much with my iPad. I have the, the Wi-Fi one, and I have both, my, both the iPad mini 4 that I have, as well as the iPad 2017 are the Wi-Fi editions. I do not plan on traveling much with them. I have a phone for that, and by and large, I don't need a device this size when I'm traveling around. So yeah, after using it for about a week, I would say the things I've noticed noticed most about it are the anti-reflective glare thing is real. If you take a look at it, like if I have them held in front of me right now, I can easily see myself in the being reflected in the screen of the iPad 2017, whereas the iPad mini 4, it's significantly darker. You can see reflections in it. It's not like an it's not like a matte finish on the display like my desktop monitors have, but it is noticeably clearer. You can you can see a lot more details with the iPad 2017. Now that could be a problem for you if you're somebody who travels around. If you like maybe using it to go ahead and read on a bench somewhere while you're waiting for an appointment or whatnot, this could be a problem. But see, it's not an issue for me because when I'm using it, I'm in a, an enclosed room, basically. There is not going to be much, if any, external light hitting the screen. And the light that has hit the screen, I've found it to be manageable. I would not consider this to be a con to the point where I would have to side with using the iPad mini 4. But it is noticeable. And I, I'm saying that from 
from like a lay point, a lay, a lay person's perspective, because I'm not saying, well, technically it doesn't have that finish on it. No, it's very noticeable that it doesn't have the finish on it. It's just in my particular use case scenario, that's not really an issue. Another thing that is quite obvious with it is its size and weight. So if you have used the iPad Air 2 or the iPad Mini 4, they're both relatively the same size, if not exact, I mean, the same thickness, if not exactly the same thickness. And the iPad 2017 is basically what 1.5 millimeters thicker. And you can tell it's thicker. It feels older and thicker. That could be an issue for you because that means that its weight is actually, it's actually heavier. It's about twice the weight of the iPad mini four. And this can have a little bit of effect on your arms when you're holding it. So for the first five days or so, I would say of my transition from the iPad mini four over to the iPad 2017, I noticed that there was significantly more fatigue in my arms. Like I couldn't hold it for nearly as long without my arms feeling a little achy, but that has largely gone away since. So I imagine that simply building up the muscles that are required to hold it, but it is heavier. It's about twice the weight of the iPad mini four. It is um, about 1.5 millimeters thicker than the iPad mini four or the iPad air two, which was basically its predecessor. So in that sense, this tablet has gone back. If you're comparing the iPad air two to this tablet, physically, this is a step backwards. It doesn't have the anti glare coating that the iPad air two did, and it's thicker than the iPad air uh, two is as well. But that doesn't, that is completely disregarding performance. And if you're somebody who's interested in the latest performance or the best performance, if you're playing games on it, the iPad 2017 has the best processor in it for that. So it, it, it depends upon, you know, what you need out of it. Do you need a light tablet? Do you need to be using it outside? These are things you should be factoring in before you consider it. So consider whether you should upgrade from the iPad mini four to it, perhaps, or the iPad um, Air two to the iPad 2017. Like I said, for myself, the only reason I had the iPad mini four was not because I wanted a small light tablet, but because it was the most affordable model that was currently on the market. I can put up with the cons of having a screen that is more reflective and a device that's slightly heavier, or well, twice as heavy as the device I was using formerly, simply because of its larger size. Now, you wouldn't think this is significant, but it actually is, because when I am in bed, I'm usually either laying on my back or on my sides. And in all three positions, this is more comfortable to hold. The one downside is I can't hold it in one hand anymore. With the iPad mini four, I could actually hold this in one hand if it was in a horizontal position and I use it in a horizontal position most of the time. With the iPad 2017, I can no longer do that, but simply holding it, uh, it's much better spaced out now. So it's basically like a foot in between my hands and I find it much less fatiguing than when my hands were closer to each other when I was holding the iPad mini four when laying on my back. And then when I am laying on my side, I usually have it propped up against a memory foam pillow. And once again, the larger size doesn't bother me. It's not a positive, but it is definitely not a negative. I've been able to manage the increase in size just fine holding it in that position where it's one end is propped up against the pill and then the other hand or my other hand is basically keeping it in place while I read it. Overall, I would say if you're looking to get into the Apple ecosystem and you're looking for like the entry level device, the iPad 2017 is certainly the device to get at the moment. I am personally intending on keeping it. I find the experience better than the iPad mini four, um, but you know, your, your mileage may vary. So this is my overview review thoughts on the iPad 2017 versus the iPad mini four. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.